today is a super exciting day. About five months ago, I placed the order with Air Power, that's the dealer for Continental, for a factory remanufactured IO550B to replace the old IO520 in my Bonanza. And about four weeks ago, I dropped off the Bonanza at Classic Aviation in Pella to do that engine swap and a couple of other things. Today, this Bonanza with the new engine is gonna fly for the first time. I'm waiting for Shane, the owner of Classic Aviation, to pick me up, and then we'll go on a test flight together. Hope you come along. I'm a bit early at the airport in Cedar Rapids today. Shane is still on the way, so I have a few minutes to enjoy the beautiful morning here on the ramp with the usual mix of flight training, airlines and business aviation. Shane picks me up in style in this beautiful hawker which will make the flight to Pella very short. Okay, not really of course. Here he is for real, landing in his V-tail Bonanza. We'll be on the way to Pella in a moment. Good morning, Shane. Hey, Martin. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Good. It's an exciting day for me. Yep. Tower Bonanza 3170 Whiskey, you ready? Uh, 27 Alpha 3. Bonanza 3170 Whiskey, Cedar Rapids, tower runway 27 at Alpha 3, turn left on course to Pella, cleared for takeoff. Left on course, cleared for takeoff, 3170 Whiskey. Okay, we are cleared to go. Okay. Yeah, clear on the right. And left. Okay, 27 matches 27. Twice. We are ready. Of course. Okay. Our descent. There's a positive rate of climb and the usable runway gear is up. Climb maintained. Oh, yes, yeah, so I'm hoping one thing we can talk about a little bit uh, today is the, the break-in procedure. Yep. Uh, so, Parker, I've seven, never seven, broken seven, in uniform. a cylinder, you know, let alone seven, one, an engine. Uniform, yeah, you've never had a cylinder out there. Nope. You've had a, wow. Wow. Good. Good deal. Yeah, so we're going to follow, you know, so there's, uh, there's tribal knowledge and there's uh, internet knowledge and there's uh, manufacturer's recommendations, so we, we typically uh, Try to try to stick with the, the people that are paying the warranty bills. Uh, Seven and a half miles south left of the Cedar Rapids. So uh, so we have I have uh, the section on uh, engine run in and break in printed out of the uh, Continental F zero maintenance manual. It says greater than seventy five percent set normal climb power run uh, uh, greater than seventy five percent for the first flight. So we'll do that. And then uh, we will, uh, uh, it says run uh, richer than normal or full rich, and we'll run it. Fortunately, we got the JPI, so we can keep an eye on that, but we'll run it pretty rich. And uh, so first flight in that, and then the first, they don't give you a specific time range, but then uh, subsequent flights, they want it, uh, again, rich at peak, but best power, uh, and uh, 65 to 75 percent. Uh, my personal experience is, uh, you know, it's it's good to run at 75 for for those first handful of hours. It's pretty important, 75 or maybe a little more. And then uh, the the good thing is, is the the manufacturer's test cell process seems to really really get it, the break in a, a really good start versus you know putting a cylinder on in the field. Uh, you got to work a little harder to break it in. So these engines come on one. They've had a good start on the break in already in the, in the test cell. So. Pilot traffic Bonanza 3170 Whiskey, 8 Northeast landing, uh, 1 6 at the line. Okay, speed check, gear coming down. 70 Whiskey's turn on final, 1 6 Pella. G36209 extended left base, runway 25. Slow to 80 miles per hour and short final on this airplane. We'll thump at the end. Nice job. 
we shut down on the ramp in Pella. Classic Aviation, which is the shop, FBO and flight school, is family owned and run. Normally this will be the time when I run over to the famous Dutch bakery in town for their delicious pastries. But as you can imagine, today my mind is on something else. All right, I'm here with Shane. Shane is the owner of Classic Aviation, the uh, shop in FBO in Pella. And uh, we met here four weeks ago when I dropped this airplane off and, and several months ago when we went through the planning process. And you know, to me, I'm, I'm an engineer, but a software engineer. I know nothing about wrenches and anything like that. The new engine was here when I dropped off the plane. Yep. And uh, yet it was four weeks of work to get it in. So it must not be quite as easy <laughs> as I think it o is. Open the box. The box is still over there with the old engine mm -hmm. set next to it. But yeah, a little more than opening the box and uh, opening an accounting and, and swapping an engine. So um, on your airplane, we did the 550 conversion. We also did the barrel to Shannon baffle kit. Um, so uh, a lot of fitting and, and, and trimming and planning and then uh, when you have the engine out, it's a great time to to see things you can't see when the engine's setting in there. Right. So, uh, did some some cleaning, some patching, uh, a few component changes while we were in there. The engine physically is essentially the same engine, 550 to 520, the outside dimensions, um, but uh, a lot of a lot of changes going in, into into place, especially with the new cooling baffles. Um, it uh, really changes the whole design of the baffle system, how it matches the cowling. And uh, so a lot of time in fitting and making that work. And of course, um, you're following an STC with certain guidance, tells you how to do certain things, doesn't just give you the part and let you decide how to do it. It gives you some good guidance. So you make sure you follow that mm -hmm. along the way. Um, and then everything you have off, you know, the exhaust system, we pressure tested the, the heat exchanger. We, we took a good look at all the exhaust manifolds when you have that stuff off is the time to do it, the, uh, the, the keel structure underneath. And uh, engine mounts, um, of course, isolation mount, uh, engine rubber mount replacement, but the engine mounts themselves, we uh, did a good inspection on and found one that we ended up changing out. Mm -hmm. We get all that done, and now it's time to uh, weight and balance flight manual supplements. Uh, so there's uh, a fair amount of time just simply in paperwork um, uh, at, towards the end of the project as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, and then of course, uh, the Bonanza, the way it's designed, um, is not the easiest engine change in the business because the nose bowl stays intact. So the, uh, the obviously the, the propeller comes off first and then uh, um, once you get everything loose, control cables, uh, wiring, uh, all that kind of stuff, then uh, the engine actually has to, has to rotate out like this, with tip up with the nose down, then slide up uh, about at this angle and then be lifted out and over. So uh, it's a little more, uh, it's a process you want to get right and you kind of don't want it dangling there any longer than it has to be. So Sounds like it was designed to, fl to be a joy to fly and not so much to be a joy to work on. Yep, yep, yeah. yep like many machines. Yeah. So. yeah, and of course the propeller is new as well. Yep, yep, the, so uh, Hartzell Scimitar, when you go to a three blade, you gain smoothness, you gain climb performance, um, but uh, you, often sacrifice speed so due to blade design we've been able to they've been able to gain some of that speed back so mm -hmm. this propeller versus the macaulay on my airplane was two to three knots faster by by the numbers i can justify yeah. so and then so again it it bolts on fairly simply um but uh then uh um doing it correctly obviously torque is important and then we did a full balance with our uh, prop balancing equipment over there um mm -hmm. did a full balance on it uh weights are added on this unit on the back of the spinner bulkhead, so uh, no ugly weights uh, in view. Yeah, let's open it up and take a look. All right, a moment of truth. You're gonna notice it opens a little harder because um, we're still breaking in. Uh, oh, wow. Still this... breaking in the, the rubber baffle seals. So, yes. uh, so everything has changed So uh, as far as the baffles, so the, the metal structure, uh, the metal baffles, and then the uh, silicone baffle seal are all new. These are uh, no ordi ordinary baffle seal. They've got uh, reinforced areas. Uh, it's got webbing inside of it. And uh, it's just gonna take a while for those to get their form. But uh, the idea of this kit is uh, to, uh, to really tighten things up so you're controlling. The air is going where you want it to. The cowling is designed to cool, cool this air-cooled engine. The cylinders have a certain design to cool, um, more cooling area. Um, 
if you look at virtually any aircraft air-cooled cylinder, you can see there's more, more cooling area in the exhaust area than there is in the intake area. So, you know, everything is designed and engineered to, to cool based on air moving through here. So um, when you put a new baffle kit in, uh, you're uh, really controlling that air and getting it to flow down through the way it's supposed to rather than having it leak away on gaps in the cowling and gaps at the back of the, back of the engine compartment. Yep, so that's the, uh, the heavyweight, back to a heavyweight starter. Uh, some experimentation with lightweight starters over the years hasn't, hasn't served very well in these mm -hmm. engines. And you can see all the flexible fluid lines uh, are new. Some come with the engine, some get replaced as we go. And uh, you can see uh, our process is to double check the torque and then put uh, torque striping on it. So you'll see different torque stripe colors for our inspectors that tighten those because we uh, we don't want those coming loose. And you can see the Bindex, uh, those are big Bindex mags, uh, 1200 series mags. So that's my favorite Magneto. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, they had the slicks really, before, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you gain a lot of, a lot of Magneto there, a lot of, it's in size and, and, and you know, spark and strength, so. That should help fly at lean of peak and start it, of yep, course. Yep, yep. You have ignition nice harness smart. as well. Yep. Yep, yeah. so that's Continental's own ignition har harness CMI you can mm -hmm. see there. So, yeah. um, And you can see a little different, there's a little different flow to this baffle system. Again, it seals up better. But they actually use, they take air from here up under this tunnel and run it back to the, to the fuel pump uh, rather than Beach took it from this side of the baffle. So we're taking air from its own place and running it down to that fuel pump, which is kind of a neat idea. Now, are these the injectors from, from my old engine, or the, are they the are, stock ones? These are Continental balanced injectors, so they're uh -huh. individually part numbered injectors, so they should should work like the gammies. We'll, we'll see. Uh, no way to tell until we fly them, of right. course. And no real well way to tell until we do a true gammy lean check. But. Right. All right. Let me open the other side yep. and see what we find there. I love the look of the propeller. I mean, it's, yeah. it's such a... Yeah, that's such a beautiful geometry. Yep, that scimitar really looks pretty good on the airplane. Fuel pump. Oil filter. Vacuum system, regulator, and, uh, and filter there. And then your inlet filter for the vacuum system there. So there's a lot going on on this side um, when you work on the airplane. and mm. um, But not a... Everything changes just a little bit in locations, uh, yeah. but not a whole lot. And of course, all the uh, the JPI stuff gets transferred over to the new engine. So this is all JPI engine monitor wiring here. And then um, the TANIS heater system, uh, the harness gets reused. The two, two pad type heaters had to be replaced, or we recommend. So you get a good seal, you, mm -hmm. you may be able to, but, and then uh, all the, uh, the individual cylinder components are uh, for the Tannis heater um, are reused from what you had before. So. Right. So what do we have to do before we, uh, before we fly it? So we'll, uh, we're, we're very close. So we'll, uh, we'll do a good pre-flight on the airplane and then we'll sit down and go through. We have Continentals laying on the glare shield there. I have Continentals uh, um, guidance for engine running and break in. Uh, so we'll go through that together, develop a plan, and then we'll go flying. All right, so we are getting uh, getting ready for our break-in flight and, and subsequent break-in flights, of course, too. So um, so we, what we've got here is a printout from Continental Standard Practice Maintenance Manual. They call it M0 now. And what they did was kind of cool. They took all their service letters and everything and combined them in this mm -hmm. manual. So it's it's kind of a, a do-all, um, covers everything you need to know. So um, so we're, I printed out the section on engine operation after cylinder replacement and or major overhaul. So we're, we're at the end of that. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, working with a factory engine. So, um, so they've done the test cell stuff. Um, so that puts us at um, our flight check, check and break in. Um, some debate whether it should be called break, use the word break, but uh, that's what we're going to use. So flight check and break in. So. Uh, it's going to talk to us about, we don't have altitude compensating, uh, so we don't have to do, there's some extra flight test, mm -hmm. some, some uh, readings at uh, uh, different altitudes. We don't have to do that. So, right. um, so we start here, uh, talks about, you know, start and ground run. We've done, so we've done a fuel system setup on the airplane. We've done, uh, set the propeller governor for RPM. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done a full, um, 
propeller balance as well during those. We did them all at the same time, so we didn't have very many runs, uh, use the same runs for, for multiple pur purposes. So, uh, and of course, we've, we've abided by these limitations for ground runs on temperatures and times and all that kind of stuff. So then that puts us uh, right up here to, to take off. So I think, you know, we've done a lot of these over the years, different things, you know, um, but a lot of engines broke in right over this airport. So um, it's, it's very nice to have two of us uh, that allow you to fly the airplane, the monitor, and we'll, uh, we'll talk, uh, we'll do some, a little briefing in the airplane on what, what I'll say to you if I think we have an issue we need to deal with or otherwise, otherwise I'll just uh, take note and, and go okay. from there. So we'll make sure we have that spelled out. But uh, we're looking for normal takeoff, climbing out normally, set climb power, and get the cruise altitude today. Um, we'll probably go to 4,500 feet over the field. It's a beautiful blue sky day, so no weather issues with this. Mm -hmm. um, but 4,500 feet gets, puts us at a good altitude, 4,500 MSL puts us at a good altitude. We can still make easily make 75% power. Mm -hmm. So uh, the main thing we're looking for is we want level flight cruise, 75% power with best power or richer mixture for the first hour of operation. So we got the JPI to help us there, but uh, we're using, in this case, Rich Peak, we're using uh, fuel as a, as a heat scavenger, as a, mm. as a, as a cooling uh, device. So uh, and then second and subsequent, subsequent hours, um, we'll do, uh, they want us to alternate cruise power settings between 65 and 75, and again, best power. So, um, and there's a little vagueness on how long that goes, but we do have some, uh, some good guidance on indications that, uh, the uh, the engine is broken and again with the test cell run there's a lot of that has been begun for us but uh, cylinder head temperature oil temperature uh, those kind of things will will start to tell us uh, that we're doing our job so um, again without a uh, without an altitude compensating fuel pump it's it's pretty simple um, you mentioned pretty simple cylinder head temperature so. is, it, is it correct that the CHTs will be higher at the beginning during the break-in yep. and then when they come down that's one indication that the break-in is working yep. and yep. getting and complete. Absolutely so you know once the cylinder is working like it it should then uh, we're gonna have less blow by uh, by the rings and we're gonna have less heat so uh, you can usually see um, see that change and oil temperature for the same reason less less air getting less combustion air getting by the rings oil temperature will start to drop too mm -hmm. so um, pro my experience has been with a test cell engine um, we'll see a less pronounced difference. It'll start out um, a little bit lower already because some of that break-in has been done. And we'll, we'll see the difference, but it'll be less pronounced. Mm -hmm. uh, with an out-of-the-box cylinder that you bolt on the airplane and go, uh, you can see a real night and day difference as it starts to come down. The only other real check we need to do, uh, aside from that airframe related, is the landing gear horn. So um, Beach's test is uh, 2,500 foot MSL. Uh, the horn should come on at a specific uh, manifold pressure setting. So uh, at some point in our descent, we're going to try to be gentle with our power reductions and go easy on the engine, but at some point in our descent, we'll have the opportunity to pull that power back briefly, and uh, we'll look for a gear horn to come in uh, 12 to 14 inches okay. at, yeah. at that altitude. The airplane does have break-in oil in it. It has uh, Phillips Type M, uh, which is a multi-viscosity break-in oil. So we do have that in. That'll be in for the first until the first oil, oil change. It's usually 25 hours. So good. Uh, you mentioned the fuel system earlier. Do, do you recall what fuel flow on takeoff you set it for? Uh, we always set it to the high end of the range mm -hmm. uh, for cooling reasons. So it's just, and I forget what this one is. It's like 20, 27 and a half. On a 550, 28. Um, it sounds painful when you think about dollars per gallon, but yeah. it's, it's a limited amount of time. But it's yeah, it it is set up uh, right to the to the top end. The yeah. JPI will will tickle the red likely on that one. So that's so. that's good for longevity. Yep. I don't yep. think many people realize that, but I always think of that red line as a minimum on takeoff, not a maximum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish it were. I wish it, it labeled, and, and there have been a few issues now, especially in turbocharged engines, where you get too much fuel. You can get too much fuel, mm -hmm. but obviously we have a control to take care of that. We can pull right. the mixture back if we need to, but uh, um, yeah, it, 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 there's, there's a, a tendency, human nature, to, I'm going to hit it right in the middle, right? Um, fuel flow is not one you want to hit right in the middle. Mm -hmm. You want to hit it on the, on the high side, mm -hmm. on the fat side. So. All right. Let's uh, do a pre-flight and then we'll, we'll go fly. Sounds good.
All right, so we'll go to 4,500 feet, um, full throttle, full reach or leaning at all? Or? I would, pr just to 4,500, I'd probably leave it. Full reach, I would leave okay. it full reach. Yeah. Um, Unless we really feel like it's, you know, we'll see as we go too. Do we leave the, the prop at 2,700? or yeah, you can back can it pull out that to back Okay. You know, if anything happens, after we get airborne, if we can't land on the runway, you you know the airport around uh, the area around the airport best. So I appreciate I'll if be you your, point, I'll be point your guide. out yep. Yep. Uh, place that you think is suitable for an emergency landing. Yeah, if we have anything on the ground, any issues on the ground um, that I feel we should abort or that you feel we should abort, well, either one of us will just call abort three times prior rotation, mm -hmm. and we'll and we'll just stop. Okay. No questions asked, we'll stop right. for any reason. After that, we'll communicate about any issues, um, but uh, we'll take it through the air. Um, and below a thousand feet, we won't, we won't try to come back towards the airport. But once we get four or 500 feet, we'll just start a climbing turn around the airport mm -hmm. so we put ourselves in a better position. All right, um, I always prime till I get good indication of fuel pressure. I assume there's no different procedure here, right? Nope, same, same pump, same. Yeah, once it hits four, it's good. One, two. Let's see if that same process works. Just yeah, yeah. Start there with the uh, throttle you know. and. Yep. Clear. It's clear. Oh, beautiful! <laughs> <laughs> I love it already. Yeah, it's. Good. I did that uh, from the start, it cranked off nice. We got right oil on. pressure and I can lean it for ground. This is so much smoother than the old one. Is it really? Yeah. You know, and one thing, you've got rigid, you know, you got rubber isolation mounts. Those are brand new now, so you got much more rigid. Uh, you know, they're, they're working the way they're supposed to. Or... Yeah, it feels, feels good already. Hello traffic, Bonanza 70 Tango Bravo is taxiing from the ramp to runway 16 for departure, Pella. Okay, it's clear left and clear right. I'm assuming traffic you know. now. Yeah, a thousand above, so that should work. Above. All right, we'll turn into the non-existing wind today for the <laughs> run-up. Run-up, uh, brakes are set, fuel is on the left tanks, the tank, both tanks are at the same level. The flight controls are free and correct. The mixture going back to best power. Uh, RPM and the EGT indication I'm looking for, propeller. Behaves as we expect. Uh, we got uh, oil pressure and fuel pressure and uh, instrument air pressure. Alternator, uh, emitter is good. Let me check for idle. Yeah, this runs much better at idle than my old one. A lot, of that, a lot of that is fuel system set up too, so that's good to hear. That's yeah. Pre takeoff, the mixture is best power, prop is high, trim. We already checked it's still at three up, cow flaps are open. Flaps, up, identified, up. They're moving. What up? Fuel pump is off, pedo heat is off. Close the door now. Alright, get my stuff out of the way here. Yeah. It's up to you if you want to close it or uh, not. Yeah, this, to. this doesn't eat much. This is two finger operation. Oh, wow. Yeah. Every, every Bonanza owner <laughs> you know, drools jealously over yeah, this. Yeah, after seeing that's, that. that's unheard of. Um, yeah. Window will be open to already. I see whoever's coming in on final there. So that's we'll good. wait. Uh, transponder is on uh, mode C and the lights are still on from when we were taxiing earlier, so I'll put this back to, oops, six mile range. There we go. Um, 
So we already we already briefed the takeoff. Uh, let's do a normal takeoff, runway one six. Uh, anything either of us doesn't like, we'll call aboard and we'll abort on the runway. Uh, no turning back under a thousand uh, AGL. Well, with the exception you said, you know, five hundred or so, we'll, we'll start well, uh, a, a gentle. Yeah, turn. things are working normally. We'll start the turn if if uh, if uh, if we have a problem, we'll, we yep. we won't go back to the airport below a thousand. We have uh, literally no wind today, so if we need to, we can pick just whatever is in front of us. Uh, that looks suitable for landing. Pella traffic, but Nancy 7 Zero Tango Bravo is departing runway 16. Pella. Clear approach. Clear runway. Yeah, so based on our ground runs, I won't expect the uh, RPM to go red, but if it does, it's no big deal. Uh, but yeah. we'll expect the fuel flow to go red, which is good. And he said uh, 28. Per hour roughly, I think, think that's about what we were showing is 28. Okay. All right, take off. All right. This feels different. <laughs> 2680. So I got a little RPM even. Yeah. Holy cow! <laughs> this is she's fast. she's pulling. Lots of thrust there. Precious temperature is good. Looks good. Positive rate, gear up. Got a quick picture of our initial climb numbers. Now watching temperatures looking good. Okay, follow left turn. Yep, works for me. Looks clear. Yeah, I think we're leaving a few horsepower at the table, right? Yeah, just a little bit there. Point it in once and see. There we go. Yes, yeah. for a warm day, that was pretty nice acceleration there yeah, on the runway. Yeah, for two people. And All right, so now let's shallow a little more. Got about 140. We got number ones getting up there a little on this EHT, which doesn't hurt during the break-in, but... If we go, maybe yeah, uh, one thirty, one forty miles. Yeah, that's keeping it in check. That's good. And nothing wrong with running. You know, if we can hold close to three eighty, nothing wrong with that on a break in. That helps break them in. But yeah, I've even seen people talk about much higher temperatures, like you know, four hundred twenty or so, being yep. normal and breaking in the. In the chrome cylinder days especially, it, there was some advantage to that too because it would help break the cylinder in more quickly. But you move your hand up, you can feel how much air is cooling the cameras. Just yeah, because pushing the, it. That's the vents and the visors right. help. Some people think this is for, for my eyes and comfort, but no, this is to keep the cameras <laughs> It's all about going. the camera. <laughs> yeah, it looks nice and cool. Yeah. They must do a better job on the number six cylinder than the old baffling. Yeah. Because that yeah, was always two, and, two and six really hot. are way better. You can see, you know, one is actually standing out as a as a hotter cylinder now, which was never the case before. Yeah. Uh, they really put a lot of a lot of engineering into that system. They took what Beach learned in the early 80s and then or mid 80s and then improved on it. Okay, I'm pulling the prop back to 2500 now. About 4,500. Sounds good. Normally, I'd go a touch higher. There's a few bumps down here, but this way we know we get our 70, 75 percent. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's How easy is it to adjust the RPM to get a little higher? We can, uh, so we would know about what it was to get it where it is, so we could do an eighth of a turn and get you a little more RPM if you want. Now in, in cruise, my IL-520 was always nice and smooth, yep. but uh, you know, on the ground it was not as well balanced. Uh, yeah, I think there's probably various factors there. The Continental is definitely paying 
more attention to balance and, and they have, you know, their injectors are more balanced like the like the gammies and then uh, yeah the, the new engine mounts make a difference in doing their job the the better and, and it did come out pretty good on the balance. It, it didn't take a lot of a lot of work to balance it. So. so we got cylinders that are nice and nice cool. And cool. Yep. Uh, so EGT is nice and cool, cylinders nice and cool, even the oil temperature is nice and cool. So if you would like, you could uh, you could lean just a little bit um, and bring those, uh, you know, just to clean it out a little bit. You can bring those cylinders or those EGTs up at the 1300s instead of the 1200s or, you know, or around 1300. So then after the first hour, it could probably go up another 1,000 or 2,000 feet? Yeah. Yeah, and I think that, personally, I, nobody's ever really been able to explain that 65 to 75, but I think I think they did that mainly to give you that freedom, you know. In a, in a perfect world, depending on how we're doing on time, you do, we, you and I do the hour, we look it over real good. You uh, you hop in and spend a little extra time getting to Oskaloosa, give yourself, you know, a little little more run time on that flight. You got, you know, a good run over to Cedar Rapids, and you're really starting to get get some time on it. But you can see as close as these are, yeah. it's it's dialed in pretty good already. You know, on, a, on a warm day, we're showing 154 on that. Oil temperature. I don't. I don't see you're gonna. I don't think you're gonna see a lot of oil temperature reduction beyond that. And you, you can, you know, switch your turn direction or do figure eights or you know, if you get, it's like spinning your head on the bat. At some point, if you want to spin around the other way, you can do that. I've always used straight weight before, but mostly because that's what the previous owners did, yep. and uh, you know, the recommendation at the time was an engine that's been running on some kind of oil shouldn't just switch halfway through its life. Yep. Uh, for this one, would you would you recommend go to something different? I, I would say 90, probably 97% of our customers are on Philips 2050 now. Okay. Uh, you know, that for a long time, Aeroshell had a big presence, but there's a lot of things about Aeroshell that semi-synthetic, multi best that's that's an issue. It's an issue on starter drives. Um, there's just a lot of issues with it. It has some some good things about it for high usage, but I, I, I don't think it's a good fit. I pretty much steered everybody away from it, and the engine shops are steering everyone away from it. In a perfect world, a straight weight oil uh, for appropriate temperature range is probably the best thing, but I always figure we're in Iowa, you know, you know we might leave, you might leave Cedar Rapids when it's minus 10 and go to Florida where it's you know, uh, you know, 90 degrees. So uh, I like the multi vis oil and the, the the Phillips. The the price is, the, in fact, I think it's the multi vis is maybe lower than straight weight price now. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, it just any day of the year, you know, you can you get busy and you know, invariably if you run a straight weight and you're you're going to change for the season while well, you just have to do an oil change and then the season changes and then you either do or don't. So. Uh, the engine shops we work with recommend if you're going to use multi vis to use the Philips 2050, and, and uh, uh, a lot of them recommend just using 2050 now. So okay, that's, that's what I would do. Well, let me think another four or five hours then at uh, the higher power setting. Then I guess after that I can um, experiment with Lena Peak. Yep. See how well it's balanced. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you know, there are those that would say wait 15 hours, but I think what you're seeing here is this, this engine's breaking in quite quickly. So, yeah. I don't, you know, on the, on the turbo series, we break them in clean a peak from the get-go. Uh, and uh, they didn't have any significant break-in problems due to that. Is that one of uh, the local jets? Yep, that's color windows there. So, Oh, but this will be good to watch. They'll come off of here climbing five, six thousand feet per minute, so they'll come through our altitude pretty quickly. All right, we'll make sure to stay here. <laughs> they will uh, switch to left turns once we're on the other side. Sounds good. 
Bella Jeff, clear jet 1 2, Victor Uniform, departing runway 1 6, left turn out, Bella. Uh, Pella traffic, Bonanza, 70 or Tango Bravo is circling above the airport. We have the uh, departing gear, gentlemen, so I will stay awake, clear of you. Roger. Yeah, I don't think we could hit that guy even if we wanted. <laughs> <laughs> it goes pretty fast. Well, we're 50 minutes in. All right. We uh, start thinking plan about how we want to bring it back down. Yep. Yep. So there's again, there's all kinds of tribal knowledge and thought. My my theory is, is obviously let's be as gentle on the airplane as we can. Traffic, so Skyhawk 278 two miles east will enter a left crosswind for three two Perry. What I like to do, and it, it, you know, again, there's not much data that says you have to do that, but let's be as gentle as we can. So. I'll start out up here, I'll pull two inches of manifold pressure off uh, and then wait a minute and pull an inch off at a time. That's kind of from the old twin Cessna world, but um, do you have to do that? No, but uh, you know, it's being as gentle as we can, so. I'm sure it can't hurt. No, no, there's... I mean, we'll start doing that? Yeah, I'd say any time uh, we can... Uh, traffic yeah. zero, 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 well, it's taking it to 23 five, inches for now. Anyone watching this on ADS-B is wondering what the heck is Martin <laughs> doing today? I'm guessing by now you have people that probably have alerts set up. They watch you on ADS-B regularly. Well, I posted an Instagram story and a Facebook story this morning saying this is the day yeah, the new engine is going to fly. They're watching. Yeah, now you can pull another inch, inch and a half, and then three miles is where we're far enough down in the green that we can start, start coming down. A nice crisp horizon out there. I'm trying to trying to figure out. I'm not a farmer, but there's I don't know if those brown fields are wheat. You can see just a if you look off that way, there's those tannish brown fields. Yeah, something just I think got harvested out there. Like Tango's departing three one. That's a little odd. Yeah, it's not normal. So the the one thing we will do is when we get. We'll level at 2,500 and we'll check that gear horn momentarily. Oh yes, there, so. yeah. Thanks for thanks for reminding me of that. I would have forgotten about that. But I really appreciate you coming along for this. Oh, my I, it's one thing to read a procedure like this on paper, and a completely different thing to actually be in the place. Okay, so <laughs> how long do we wait between these steps? Yep. Um, yep. Don't claim to be an expert on anything, but uh, we've done a lot of these and had good results. So. That's really the the proof is, is if you know the engines are running yeah. the way they should without cylinder work. And you know, after the money spent on this and and the hours that you and your you guys spend on it, the last thing I want to do is damage it <laughs> right. by by not breaking it in right. 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 None of us want that. All right, you right. can pull another inch off. Golf is five miles to. Maybe we're checking the winds one more time, make sure they haven't switched. Eight, one, one, Zulu, weather, wind, three, one, zero, at three, visibility, <laughs> one, zero. I think it's your choice. Actually, if you don't mind using one, six, there's a bit of a pothole on three, four that they're okay. supposed to be coming out to fix, so. Yeah, uh, no, that, that's fine. One, I was just looking, you know, if we do have an engine problem, where where is, more open space yeah. and it seems like one six has one six is more options. Yeah. Three miles west, two thousand landing three two Newton. All right, it's twenty five hundred. Thirty five three two Newton. Full stop. Okay, so what we'll do is just gently bring the power back until we hear it sound. Note the manifold pressure, and then we can bring it back in. So okay. we're at eighteen point nine. Actually, if you don't mind, I'll do it while you're flying. Yeah, I'll let you handle the throttle. Monticello traffic, uh, 75740 Delta. We're nine miles to the north, entering a left down one for almost three Monticello. 
13.7, 13 13.8, 13 that's yep. right in range, so. So, uh, maybe after this downwind, shall we set up for landing, or? Yep, yep, yep. that would work land. out good. Three greens. Three green is confirmed. Runway is clear. Three out traffic, 411, final one, three. engine. Yeah, I think yeah. you'll be happy with it. <laughs> I think, think you got a good one. Yeah. I don't think they turn out too many lemons down there, but I think you did all right on this one. You know, people <coughs> talk about Continental. They badmouth them on, on the boards and, oh no, you got to send all these cylinders into some boutique shop first. I, and I've seen plenty of Continental rebands run all the way to overhaul without a cylinder off. So I think the only thing you want to think about, and I we don't have to do it now, we can do it when I come back for the oil changes. I think I would like the RPM to be a little higher. Yeah, it's up to you. I can have them tweak it if you want. Oh. Uh, that'll work. That was a good flight, and while Shane's crew adjusted the RPM limit, I did still make a quick bakery run over to Yasma in downtown Pella. On the way back to Cedar Rapids, I picked up my friend Steve in nearby Oskaloosa, where he had dropped off his Piper Dakota for its annual inspection. So the two questions which I imagine may be on your mind at this point are, how much did all this cost, and what is the actual performance improvement? The cost question is easier to answer. Engine overhauls are about the most expensive part of aircraft ownership, and this one was towards the higher end of what I could have spent. All added up, you're looking at around $80,000. That amount bought me a factory remanufactured IO 550B with zero hours total time, a new propeller, a new prop governor, and what I would call the upgrade fee to switch from the 520 to the 550, which includes the DeShannon STC and baffles. There's also a surcharge for returning a different engine core to Continental for the exchange. The total figure includes a long list of other smaller parts and shop labor, of course. The equivalent setup with the factory remanufactured IO520 would have been around $10,000 less. But really, the only time to even consider an upgrade is when the engine is overhauled or replaced. So it was now or never. Looking at performance, one thing that changed is the weight and balance. The new engine is lighter than the old one by about a pound, but the new propeller and baffle kit add a little weight. Since the STC increases my maximum gross weight by 100 pounds, the net change from my useful load is a nice increase of almost 90 pounds. Not bad. The rest of the performance question is harder to answer. Acceleration on takeoff is better by a margin that doesn't require charts or measurements to feel it. You can easily feel the increased power. The STC replaces some of the performance charts in the Pilot Operating Handbook, similar to the original pages, but just different enough that a true apples to apples comparison is difficult. For cruise speed, looking at just one example here at 75% power, you can see the old chart showed a maximum of 168 knots true airspeed on a standard day whereas the new chart shows 8 knots more. Now, is that a meaningful comparison? For me, probably not, because once the engine is broken in, I will revert to lean of peak for cruise, where I take a speed penalty in exchange for better fuel economy and lower temperatures. Once everything settles in and I have a few longer flights with a new setup under my belt, I will report back with some meaningful real-life data. Until then, fly safe, Thanks for watching today and see you in the next video.